Ever thought about what's most important in your life? Is it music, computer games, friends, family? Well, what about water? It's something we take for granted, but did you know that I'm mostly made of water? And so are you. And so is this orange. No water, no coffee, and no showers either. Ugh. Life is just not possible without water. Earth would just be a barren rock without it. Your water comes from a large protected reservoir up in the hills northwest of Victoria. This is the Souk Reservoir. Most of the land around the Souk Reservoir comprises its watershed. A watershed is the land area from which water runs off into a body of water such as a lake or stream. Most of the precipitation that falls in this area will make its way down to the reservoir in streams or underground. Water that falls beyond here goes downhill in another direction to another body of water. This is Rithit Creek, which brings about 25% of the captured precipitation into the reservoir. The Greater Victoria watershed area comprises 20,000 hectares of land that is protected. The Souk Reservoir encompasses approximately 8,000 of that. No one but authorized personnel is allowed in the area except during the annual tours. That's to keep the water and the area pristine, so your drinking water can be as good as it gets, and it pretty well is. The reservoir supplies every person, business, industry, and farm in the Greater Victoria area. The whole Saanich Peninsula through to Souk, of course, with the exception of those few on wells. In order to serve a growing population, the dam was raised 6 meters in 2002 so that 78% more water could be stored in the reservoir. It holds nearly 93 million cubic meters. Today, approximately 340,000 people in Greater Victoria depend on this water, and our population continues to grow. But currently, it's not feasible to raise the dam. There are other reservoirs up in these highlands that can be used if the Souk Reservoir becomes critically low, including Goldstream Reservoir, Lubi, Butchart, and Japan Gulch. There is also a reservoir right beside the Souk Reservoir named the Deception Reservoir. It keeps the Souk River running. Water overflows down the spillway when the reservoir is full and it is released through pipes the rest of the year, even in the driest part of the year when historically the river would have been dry. This water flow is part of an important agreement with the Souk First Nation so that they can retain their fish dependent livelihood and way of life. The river provides habitat for salmon that come to spawn here and for the young fry to get a start in life before they head off to the ocean for several years. And the Water Services Department is thinking ahead. It just bought all this area. The Leech River watershed is to become a future water source. Hopefully, not for another 50 years. But that depends on us not wasting water. From an environmental perspective, Dams affect habitat by flooding land above them and reducing water flow below them. To date, Water Services has done much to minimize the impact of the current dams on the Souk and Deception Reservoirs, and in fact have enhanced the habitat. You probably have a good idea of how all this water gets up into the highlands. Rain falls. Occasionally there's some snow too. There's a scientific explanation for how this water moves around. It's known as the water cycle, or the hydrologic cycle. Water is found in many different forms on the surface of the earth, as ice, glaciers, snow, and snowpack, and as water in lakes, rivers, streams, and of course the ocean. It is constantly being moved around under the power of the sun. For example, water evaporates and rises into the air. Trees transpire, releasing moisture into the air. Clouds form, then they condense and the water falls back to the surface of the earth as snow, rain, sleet, or hail. The rain trickles downhill either as surface water or groundwater, as does snowpack after it melts. The water flows into streams, lakes, rivers, and the ocean. Some of it is taken up by vegetation, and the water cycle continues. So the sun has a lot to do with water, where it is and what form it's in. I guess then, it's not surprising that a local climate has a lot to do with the local transfer of H2O. As you probably notice, we have a pretty sunny climate. It's quite a distinctive climate for the west coast of British Columbia. 
we have what's considered a northern Mediterranean climate, like Italy or Greece. In summer, we get very little rainfall, around 100 millimeters. In winter, we get 10 times more rainfall, but it's nothing like what they get in Vancouver or the northwest coast of Vancouver Island. Those are rainforest areas. Our native Gary Oaks would never survive in that climate. They like more sun. Most of our weather comes from the west or southwest. The clouds dump most of their precipitation on the Olympic Mountains in Washington State and on the mountains just west of us. We're in a rain shadow. We may love the sun here, but we also want and need water. Fortunately, the winter rains usually replenish the Souk Reservoir so that we'll have enough all winter long and during our long, dry summers with some conservation measures. In the Souk Reservoir watershed, 1,600 millimeters of precipitation falls on average in the winter. This water percolates down through the soils. Some trickles into streams that spill into larger streams. Some of the water moves more slowly downhill underground. Some trickles into wetland areas. Wetlands also play an important role in the water cycle here. Joel Ussery is the manager of resource planning in the Water Protection Division of the CRD Water Services Department. We're one of the major wetlands here in the water supply area at the north end of Souk Reservoir. Wetlands like these are really important because they act as sponges, soaking up the winter rainfall and then when the rains are over, slowly releasing that water to keep the hydrologic system going. The wetland soils are so saturated and low on oxygen, it's difficult for this plant material to decompose. So you end up with these sponge-like soils. You can see how much water is in there. So we can see the green vegetation and that driftwood in the distance marks the upper water level boundary. And you can see just how much the reservoir has dropped. It's mid-October and there hasn't been any rainfall entering the reservoir since about May. So we've dropped the reservoir level about six vertical meters, all as a result of people using water. Water is not just important to us. It also supports the whole ecosystem of that area, which is home to a diverse range of animals and birds. Until 1993, the area was logged sustainably to fund the development of the water supply system. Now the focus is on the management of the lands to protect water quality. So a lot of different forest ages in the water supply area. These are Douglas fir, about 30 years old. As you look around, you can tell that they were planted. They're fairly evenly spaced. They grew up nice and tall and straight. Lower branches didn't get enough light, so they died back. But if you look up, you can see all the live branches concentrated at the top. This is an older Douglas fir forest. The trees here are probably at least 150 years old. Douglas fir is the main species, but there's a lot of shade tolerant western hemlock and western red cedar growing up underneath. Here are two of the main species of trees in this forest side by side, so it provides us a good opportunity to look at the differences. This is a Douglas fir. It's got these big fissures in it. Um, lots of places for things to grow, like the lichens, the old man's beard, and the Clodina lichens that we see here. Douglas fir needles are kind of like a bottle brush or a hairbrush. There's needles all the way around the branch. Douglas fir is the main lumber tree in British Columbia. That's its primary claim to fame, but it's also a fire-dependent species. It's the first tree to regenerate after fire on southeast Vancouver Island. So that's why it's the uh, primary tree in our forests. The tree next to it is a western red cedar. The bark of the western red cedar is very different. It's very thin, kind of a stringy bark, easily peeled off. Cedars were the tree of life for the First Nations that lived on the coast. That stringy bark that was easy to peel off was also easy to weave into clothes and baskets and hats. The wood of the western red cedar is really easy to split, so it was good to make houses and canoes and uh, bent wood boxes out of. The needles 
or the leaves, if you like, of the western red cedar are very different from the Douglas fir. They have this scaly foliage instead of needles. Forests are valuable in and of themselves, but they also perform an important function when it comes to your water. They hold soil in place so it won't erode and muddy the water. And the soil itself cleans the water as it runs down to the reservoir. As rain falls, some of it is intercepted by the forest canopy. The rest lands on the surface of the soil, it infiltrates down, filtered out through this fine organic material and the soil particles. Then the force of gravity percolates the water through the soil into surface waters like streams and reservoirs. These characteristics of the soil, combined with the functions that the forest provide, act together to create this natural water filtration system here in the watersheds. There's an advantage to these coarse textured sandy soils. If some does end up in the reservoir through erosion, uh, it settles out quite quickly. If you look carefully, you can see it sinks pretty fast to the bottom. Together, the forests and soils are often called green infrastructure. That's because they provide a living system of water delivery and, and filtration. Human-made infrastructure like water pipes, power lines, are often thought of as essential services, but I think it's time we started valuing ecosystem services like providing clean water even more highly. Plus, the forest ecosystems in the water supply area don't just supply water, they produce oxygen, store carbon, support populations of fish and wildlife, and they provide a beautiful scenic backdrop to Victoria. I think Joel said it all. The forest around the Souk Reservoir is a very special place. Think about that the next time you have a glass of water. And remember, be the difference. Conserve water. So long for now. <laughs>